Archie, great detectives of old time radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. Got a comment? Email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. And uh, as always, become a fan of the show on Facebook, facebook.greatdetectives.net. Before we do get started with today's show, I do want to remind you that our listeners uh, can try Audible uh, free for two weeks and get a free audiobook. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash radio. And as I've mentioned before, you can either listen uh, to your choice of audiobook for work or for pleasure, uh, or you can also get a high-quality uh, old-time radio set like The Shadow or Abbott and Costello. That's audiblepodcast.com slash old-time radio. Today's episode is called Mexican May, so let's listen and then we'll come back. <laughs> Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Box 13, care of the Star Times. If you mean what you say in your advertisement, perhaps you are the one to help me. If help does not come for me soon, I will be killed. Please use the enclosed airline ticket and come to Mexico City at once. When you arrive, go directly to the Hotel Mariposa and wait. Please hurry, because every hour brings me closer to death. Because every hour brings me closer to death. Arthur Mead. Sure, the letter had a ring to it that made me believe it. And I felt sorry for him. But 48 hours later, I had someone else to worry about. A fellow named Dan Holliday. And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, Mexican Maze. Mexico City. Mmm, what a place to be. Would you like to go in my place, Susie? I sure would, Mr. Holliday. All right, I'll tell you what. You take the ticket and go. Then when you get to Mexico City, you find Mr. Arthur Mead. Then what? Then, keeping from being killed. What's the matter, Susie? Don't you like Mexico anymore? Oh, you were kidding when you said I could go, weren't you? <laughs> what makes you think that? Oh, how could I keep, how could I keep anyone from being killed? And what worries me is how am I going to do it? He sure sounds like he's got his back to the hall. Oh, uh, Susie. Wall. But wherever he's got it, he sounds as though he might not have it there long. Okay, Susie, close up shop. I'm off to the land of the Aztecs. <laughs> flight to Mexico City was routine, and an hour later after I got off the plane, I registered as Box 13 at the Hotel Mariposa and was shown to my room. The bellboy had no sooner left than... Hello? Is this the man from Box 13? Yes, I'm Box 13. Thank heavens you came. I was desperate, Mr... Holiday. Dan Holiday. Listen, I've only a couple of minutes, Holiday. I've got to talk fast. Are you there? Of course, go ahead. There's an importer here. An American. His name is Robert Lucas, and he... Hello. 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 So there I was, with a dead telephone and a name, Robert Lucas. I had no idea where to get in touch with me, and the telephone directory had no listing for him. But it had one for Mr. Lucas. And it was with Mr. Lucas that I made an appointment for that afternoon. I got there a little early and approached his office. Then I stopped. The door was open, and I couldn't help overhearing it. And if that's your idea of an explanation, we're through, Robert. We're finished. That's what you think, Marilyn. It's not quite that simple, my dear. Not at all. I'll make it simple. Very simple. You understand? I'm afraid I do. You didn't think I'd do that, did you? Maybe you'd like me to go to Mead. Goodbye, Mr. Lucas. I ducked back out of sight and let her pass. She didn't see me. But what I saw was a woman of maybe 30 and very lovely. Her heels beating a tattoo down the hall. I waited a couple of seconds, then... Yes, come on in. 
What can I do for you? I telephoned for an appointment, Mr. Lucas. Oh, yes. You're Mr. Holliday? That's right. Please sit down. Oh, thank you. Now, sir, you said over the phone that you were an importer. In a way, yes. In a way. You are or you aren't. Let's say I was imported. What are you driving at? Now, look, I'm a very busy man. If this is some sort of ruse to get in here and pester me for a job, I've no time. If you need financial help, go to the... Oh, American I don't need help, Mr. Lucas. I give it. Will you come to the point? Certainly. The point is Arthur Mead. You, uh, you said Arthur Mead? That's right. You know him? What business is it of yours? Mr. Mead asked me to come here. He said he was in danger of being killed. Killed? The same. He telephoned me about an hour after I got in. But uh, we were cut off. Or he was. Where was he? I don't know. What did he say? He mentioned your name, that's all. Oh, that's all? He didn't have time for chit-chat. What's your connection with him? Let's say business. Mr. Holliday, I don't know where Arthur Mead is. I haven't seen him for days. What's he afraid of? I don't know. <laughs> you don't seem to know very much. <laughs> that makes us even... Yes, I guess it does. So you've no idea where I can find Arthur Mead? No, there are a great many places in Mexico City where a man could hide. What makes you think Mead is hiding? I I assume he is, since neither of us knows where he is. Then I guess our little chit-chat is over. It would seem so, Mr. Holliday. Well, I may call on you again. Oh, please do. We'll talk about the importing business. Perhaps we may even talk about exports. <laughs> I didn't like the way Lucas said exports. He could have met me. A second thought convinced me he did. But he knew plenty about Arthur Mead, which gave him aces against my deuces. But I had an ace, too. A girl named Marilyn. Now all I had to do was find her. So I started right away. And the first stop was the elevator man in Lucas's office building. Si, sí, senor, si. Sí, I know the senorita. <laughs> she come here many times. Uh, who is she? What's her name? <laughs> Why do you want to know this, senor? Well, she's very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you like her, si? Sí? If you want it that way, yes. <laughs> bueno, bueno. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. She is senorita Marilyn Cooper. Oh, an American. Si, sí, si. Sí. Um, where can I find her? Huh? I do not know where she lives, senor. Oh, I see. But I know where she works. Oh, that's better. Where? <laughs> She's a dancer in the club de la Tres Flores. Uh, where's that? El Calle Alameda. Alameda Street? <laughs> si, si. Oh, thank you. And here. Oh, gracias, senor. Muchas gracias. You're welcome. In Spanish. <laughs> I went to the Club of the Three Flowers. It was closed in the afternoon, so I had to wait until the evening. My Spanish being somewhat on the rusty side, I had a little trouble getting to see Marilyn Cooper. But I managed it, and ten minutes later, I was sitting across from her at one of the tables. I, uh, I don't know you, do I? No, you don't, Miss Cooper. You're an American? Mm-hmm. So are you. Uh huh? Why'd you come to see me? Two reasons. One, Arthur Mead. <laughs> what? The other, Robert Lucas. Who are you? I'm the man who always pops up to scare people with things I'm supposed not to know. Well, I'm not scared. No. How How do you know about Mead and Robert? Why do you call me by his last name and Lucas by his first? Does that make any difference? No, except that I happen to overhear your little spat with him today. Well, I... Please, please don't get up. I didn't mean to. But you were talking in something more than a soft whisper, and I... Then you know what he did. If you mean that slap, yes. <laughs> What's your name? Dan Holliday. Do you know Arthur Mead? No, I'm beginning to think I'll never know him. I... What are we going to say? If I tell you where you can find Arthur Mead, what'll you do? That all depends. You'd better find him before Robert Lucas does. Oh, why? Listen, I'll talk fast. I'll say it once because Robert's capable of having me watched and getting even with me. Go ahead. What have you got to say? Robert's got Mead tied up. Mead's only chance to get back on his feet financially is a deal he's got on the fire with a man named Barnes. What kind of a deal? I don't know exactly. Something to do with the export business. Robert's trying to prevent that. Well, why doesn't Mead go to the police? Police? 
Meade's no angel. He's got plenty of tar on his record. But he's got to keep out of Robert's way until he closes the deal with Barnes. Mm. That's why he's hiding. Yeah. And our Mr. Lucas would like to close a deal with Meade permanently if he found him. Yeah, he would. Lucas has got a lot of friends. Some of them are real ugly, outside and inside. All right. Where can I find Meade? 34 Alvarado Drive. 34 Alvarado Drive. You better get out of here. That's one more question. What? Tell me how you know where to find Meade. I got friends, too. I found out. Uh Oh? And we're going to make Lucas pay for the information. What do you think I am? Someday we'll go into that matter. Right now I'm going to find Meade and get myself straightened out. If possible. I left Marilyn Cooper and I was firmly convinced that a nicer pair of characters than Marilyn and Lucas I'd never meet again. No tears shed if I didn't. I took a cab to 34 Alvarado Drive, and when I got there, a clerk told me Senor Meade was in number 107. I walked down the hallway, then I stopped. The door to Meade's room was open, and I heard... I looked in. Waited a second, and then... Aren't you far from home plate, Mr. Uh, Lucas? You! Let's not be hasty, Mr. Lucas. Take your hands off. Let's go inside. Take your... Inside, please. Where's Mead? Do you see him? I'd like to. Take a look around. You'll see what I saw. Empty drawers. Empty closet. Empty room. That is, except for you and me. Brilliant. Elementary. Now, where's Mead? I don't know. How do you know he lived here? This afternoon you told me you didn't know. It's none of your business. You were searching this room for what? Expect to find me tucked away in a drawer? Holiday, you're meddling in something that's none of your business. Now, let me out of here. Not until you... Let me out... Is that loaded? It is. Now get away from the door. Certainly. It's all yours. You show good sense, Holiday. Good night. First trick to Mr. Lucas. And I still wanted to know what became of me and what I was doing in the game. I was sure Lucas didn't know where Mead had gone. I looked around the room. Nothing was left in the drawers, the closet. Meade had cleared out, clean. Then on on the battered telephone table, I found a bus schedule. The departure time of a northbound bus had been ringed in red. I wondered if Lucas had seen it. If he had, I had to beat him to the bus depot. As I opened the door... Que tal, amigo? I... I speak English. So do I. You will please to sit, senor. Please to sit. Aren't you in the wrong room? Senor, when I'm a little muchacho, I have learned to throw a knife. Very good. I have not forgot. You like to see me do it with this knife? Uh, no, thank you. Then you will be pleased to sit. Ever come face to face with a big toothy grin holding a knife in your face? Well, it isn't pleasant. I sat. <laughs> Does this make you happy? Si. <laughs> bueno. Look, I'm afraid you've made a mistake, senor. I... Oh, oh, no, senor. You make the mistake. Ah, it's muy triste. Uh, it's very sad. What do you mean? Nada. <laughs> Nothing, senor. I have only come to kill you. He said it so calmly, so matter-of-factly, but he... But he meant it. His grin got wider and the knife that glinted in his hand looked... Very, very sharp, then. I am paid to kill you, senor. I do not have something against you. But business is business. You will please to stand, amigo, with your back to me. Now, listen, I... With your back to me, senor. I like your face. And I do not wish to see it when I do with the knife what I am paid to do. Now back to Mexican Maze, another Box 13 adventure with Alan Land as Dan Holliday. I turned my back on the grin. It wasn't easy to do. I saw his reflection in the window I faced. He came toward me. 
The knife held straight out in front. Then he... Then he did something I couldn't understand. Until later. Much later. He stopped and spoke. Amigo, I like your face. How much you pay me not to kill you? Uh, what did you say? A face was a face, amigo. If I did not like your face, I would kill you. But... <laughs> Since I like your face, I will make the bargain. How much do you want? How much uh, it is worth uh, your life. I haven't got that much with me. I will take what you have. Turn around. Do not try the tricks, no? Oh, no, don't worry. Uh, give me what you have. All right. Ah, bueno. Uh, the little coins uh, you keep. Now, amigo. Adios. Ah, and uh, por favor, do not try to follow me. I would not like to break these bargain. Adios. I didn't get it. Why didn't he kill me? I stopped thinking about it because I had to get to Mead. It was too late to get to the bus terminal before Mead's bus left. The next best thing was... Bueno. Hello. Uh, give me the Mexico Central bus terminal. Si, señor. Gracias. Hello. I want you to page one of your passengers leaving on the 1018 bus for the north. His name is Arthur Mead. Gracias. I waited. I waited and wondered if Lucas had beat me to the punch then. Hello? Mead? This is Holiday. Where have you been? Never mind that. Why did you ring off this morning? I had to. Listen, Holiday, I've got to leave Mexico City. I think Lucas knows where I'm staying. Yeah, I know he does. He was here. Here? Where are you? 34 Alvarado. He did know. Look, uh... What's all this about? Holiday, I've got everything arranged. Go to the Hotel Del Grado. Register there in my name. Your name? Please, I'll miss this bus and I've got to leave. Just listen to me. Go to the hotel. Register in my name. A package will be delivered to you. Later, a man named Barnes will come to see you. Give him the package. It contains money. He'll give you an envelope. Keep it until you hear from me again. Have you got that? Yeah, all right. But, but how will I get in touch with you? You won't. I'll contact you. And Holiday. Yes, what? Protect yourself. Because Lucas will do everything he can to keep that deal from being closed. Even murder. Mead hung up and left me hanging. Way out on a limb. Sure, I could have taken a plane back home. But I owed something to Mr. Lucas for sending the grin after me. I was sure it was Lucas who'd done that because only he knew I was in Mead's place and I... Only he and... Marilyn Cooper. I left 34 Alvarado with no regrets. Went to the Hotel Del Grado and registered as Arthur Mead. I signed the register and no sooner had I done so when the clerk said, Ah, Senor Mead, there was someone here earlier this evening. He left this package and asked that it be delivered to you. Oh, uh, thank you. Just a minute, please. Is he, Senor Mead? Has there been a Mr. Barnes asking for me? Barnes? Uh, Barnes... No, no, Senor Mead. No one has been asking for you. Well, who left this package for me? It was delivered by messenger, Senor. Mm, I see. Well, thank you. It is a pleasure, Senor Mead. I hope your stay here will be very pleasant. Pleasant, he said. He didn't know what he was saying. I would just turned away from the desk when I caught sight of Marilyn Cooper. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw her go toward the back of the hotel. I waited a moment and went out another entrance. Cut through to the back of the hotel and ducked into a doorway where I couldn't be seen. Marilyn Cooper was waiting for someone. She hadn't long to wait until a bellhop came up to her. Senorita. Here I am, Tomas. Mm. Huh. Si. Here's the bottle and the note. And the money, senorita? You'll get that when the job's done. No, senorita. I want it now. I said when the job's done. Now, senorita, or there will be no job. How do I know you'll go through with it? I have made a promise, senorita. Promise? It is a very bad thing to kill a man with poison. You're being paid. Now. I... All right, here. <laughs> Gracias. You know what you're to do. Si, you si, take si. the coffee to Senor Mead. With what is in the little bottle in the coffee. That's right. Senorita, it will kill quickly, see? Si? Yes. Now, just listen. When you've done that, wait outside his door until you're sure he's drunk the coffee. Then go inside. Put the note I gave you on the dresser in the room. You understand? Si, si. It is quite simple. All right. Adios, senorita. Wait. Si. 
You'd better not slip up, Tomas. If you do... I do not make these slips. Hasta la vista, señorita. Now, here was a twist. Marilyn Cooper paying to have Mead poisoned and a note left with his body. Then a cold chill hit me. I just remembered I was Arthur Mead. I went back to the front of the hotel and was just about to go inside when I saw Robert Lucas leading a car. You come with me, Ernesto. Ernesto was none other than a grin. He and Lucas went into a telegraph office next to the hotel. I looked into his car. There was luggage in the rear seat, lots of it. I sauntered toward the car, trying to keep one eye on Lucas in the telegraph office and the other on the car. I ducked back. But not before I saw something dangling from the key ring in the ignition lock. What I saw made me blink. Then Lucas and the grin came back out. I twisted away and out of sight. They drove off and I went into the telegraph office. I found the pad of message blanks Lucas had used. I tore off the top and ten minutes later I showed it to Lieutenant Casadro, Mexico City Police. But, uh, Senor Holiday, I do not understand. You say you did not send this message? I did not, Lieutenant. Lucas sent it. That's the impression of the telegram he sent. Simple kid's trick. Just run a soft pencil over the sheet and the writing comes out. If the writer pressed hard enough when he wrote it. And Lucas did. Box 13, care of Star Times. Uh, that is a newspaper, senor? Yes, yes. yes. R- read the message. Uh, have finished work in Mexico City. Going to Criotas for vacation. Take care of things, Susie. See you soon. Dan. I happen to be Dan. But why should senor Lucas send this? If we play out this little game, we'll know. He wanted this, uh, this Susie to think you had gone to Criotas. That's it. But why? Lieutenant, if you'll send a wire to the United States asking about Arthur Mead, I think we'll have part of our answer. Oh, very good. I will send it. Then what? Then you'll be in the hotel later. I'm in room 512, and I'll be lying on the floor with an empty poison bottle and a suicide note. Senor Holiday, this is a Chinese puzzle. Senor Lieutenant Casadro, this is a Mexican maze. But I think we're going to come out of it, on top. Now, here's what we can do. I need your help. Send the wire to the United States. Then come to Hotel Delgado. Come in. Senor me, here is coffee. Coffee? <laughs> I didn't order it. I, I know, senor, but it is the custom of the hotel. It is very good coffee, senor. Uh, Americans like coffee, see? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, thanks. Put it on the table. Uh, see, senor. I'm going to pour for you, see? Mm, please. Ah, senor, you just right to drink. I'll bet it is. Okay, here you are. Huh? Muchas gracias, senor. Hey, it is that I hope you are going to sleep well. I'll just bet you do. Good night. I listened for a moment, then I made with a coffee cup. Then I went into my act. Bellhop came back in, put the note on the dresser, and then... Andale! Andale! Help! Help! The senor me! He is dead! The senor me! Here! Here, yes, muchacho! Oh, policía! Hey, hey, senor lieutenant! Hey, el senor me! Está muerto! Muerto! Silencio! What's the matter? Oh. Senorita, you know this man? Well, well, yes, it's Arthur Mead. And you, senorita? Uh, Marilyn Cooper. Marilyn, uh, what is it? What's the matter? Uh, Good Lord, Mead. Come no closer to the body, senor. You know this man, too? Yes, I know him well, Arthur Mead. He's dead. Very dead, senor. It is... Oh. Uh, no. A note? Uh, I can no longer face the world after what I have done. This is the best way out. Arthur Mead. Oh. Uh, poor Mead. Robert, please, take take me away from here. Why so fast, man? <gasps> what? Holiday. Lieutenant Graben. Have you made that bell hop? Oh, One moment, oh, senor Lucas. Senorita Cooper. I do not wish to fire this gun. You idiot, you said it was safe, you fool. Shut up, shut up, Mary. Well, this looks like a real argument. Not like the one you staged for me before, Lucas or Mead. No matter what you call yourself, your name's Mud from now on. Senor Holiday, it was a great pleasure. All mine, Lieutenant. Uh, but will you please explain? We have no time before, and uh, there are my reports to be made out. 
Sure. Well, Meade was an embezzler. You see, my telegram to the United States verified that. So the trail was getting hot. Now, the one sure way to make the police stop hunting for you is to... Well, is to be dead. But uh, sooner or later, we would have received a description from the United States. Mm-hmm. Even so. You'd have wired the States that Arthur Meade had committed suicide down here. You had verification that I was Meade. Marilyn Cooper, Lucas, or, or Meade. And the hotel clerk. And the big deal Meade was going to have? A fake. A blind to keep me from getting suspicious. There's the envelope that was supposed to contain money. <laughs> Full of cut-up newspapers. Ah. Uh, but one more point. Why did not the man kill you at the 34 Alvarado? Because he wasn't supposed to. You see, that was a stall to keep me from getting to the bus terminal before Lucas did. The red mark on the bus timetable would make me think me to take in a bus. But Lucas had to get there before I did. Or at least in time to answer my call if I had him paged. Oh. Senor, if people spent as much time making good things instead of bad things like this, what a wonderful world it would be. Mm. It's not so bad, Lieutenant. But it has a hard time keeping ahead of the Meads and Marilyn Coopers. <laughs> Holiday, I didn't know what to think when I got that wire saying you were going to take a vacation in Creosote. Uh, Susie, Creotus. Anyway, you were supposed to think I'd gone there, and, well, it would have been a dead end. Just think, you might have been killed as Arthur Meade. I might have been killed as Dan Holiday. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. There's one more thing. Hmm? What's that, Susie? You said you noticed something dangling from the key ring in, in the ignition lock of Lucas's, uh, uh, of Meade's, well, well, in the ignition lock. Oh, it was a tag, Susie. A tag attached to a key, and the number on the tag was 107. 107? Mm-hmm. Meade's room at 34 Alvarado. Now, I ask you, why would Lucas have had that on his keychain if he hadn't have been Meade himself? Jeepers. Now, that's the kind of adventure I like. When are you going again? Oh, good night, Susie. <laughs> Next week, same time, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville. This week's original story was written by Robert Mitchell and Gene Levitt. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. The part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker. Production is supervised by Vern Carstensen. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount picture. Welcome back. The one thing you can say for Sylvia Picker's uh, portrayal of Susie is you couldn't really tell if she was flubbing a line. Uh, I've been listening to Abbott and Costello, uh, their shows. They uh, flubbed their lines quite a bit, had the script right in front of them. At the end, I couldn't tell whether she was flubbing it or whether it was written that way. Anyway, we have a couple quick comments before we wrap out. This one comes from Shaq, uh, who writes, I've been listening via podcast for quite a while now. Love the movies. Love it all. Big fan of Box 13 and Sherlock Holmes. Keep up the great work, Adam. And a nice note from Dan. Hey, Adam, love the shows. I found them on the Zoom network. I listen all day in the car. Box 13 and Johnny Dollar are my favorite. I do miss Pat Novak. Shows are fantastic. They help my day go by. Keep up the great work. Thanks a lot, Dan. Well, thank you, Dan. And the one thing with Pat Novak that I'm hopeful about is there are quite a few lost episodes. There were two lost episodes from the National Run, but uh, probably at least 25 episodes missing from the San Francisco Run with uh, Jack Webb. So I'm hopeful that some of these lost episodes will come to light and we'll be able to revisit a Pat Novak because it's one of my favorites, too. All right, well, we will be back uh, next week with another episode of Box 13, and tomorrow it's Jeff Regan. So uh, we'll be, uh, be uh, waiting for you then. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>